This is the Andres Segovia Show. Hey, greetings, everyone. It's Andres, and I'm coming at you with another tech review. In this one, I'm covering the Remarkable 2 e-ink paper tablet with the folio and the marker. Now, I've already done an unboxing of this, so you haven't seen that. I'll give you my first impressions on that one. But since then, it's been two months since I've actually acquired this thing, and maybe I should have waited for that awesome Black Friday bundle they did. But uh, no, I have no regrets because uh, I'm going to give you my impressions of this. Uh, I don't want to say this is the most thorough review that's probably out there. This is more of a, of a review coming from a first-time e-ink paper tablet user. Now, I have used e-inks, and I still do, but mostly in the form of e-readers. And I've always questioned why isn't there one with the capability of a stylus, since I use styluses across almost everything. I have an iPad with an Apple Pencil. I have the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7 with the S Pen. I have my primary device, a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra with an S Pen. I skipped a couple of generations of devices for Samsung because I was holding on to my Note 10 because of the stylus. So I've gotten really used to relying on a stylus. My computers mostly are powered by Microsoft, which are the Surface Pro lineup with Surface Pen. So it was only natural for me to gravitate to something like this, uh, but I didn't really understand at the time why I would need something like that in the first place if I can use an iPad. Well, that's initially what my impression was until I kept picking up my, my Kindle and I'm like, you know what? It'd be a lot nicer if I can write on my Kindle. And there is such thing now, the Kindle Scribe, which is about the same price or more expensive than this. Uh, and Michael Fisher actually did an excellent review of that. And I'll leave a link in the, in the comment section down below because I think it's worthwhile for you to compare what is out there and why between the two, the Remarkable is the more superior product because I did consider the, the, the Kindle product, but I'm like, uh, First, I had to wait a little longer. And secondly, I don't think it's for me. And sure enough, it wasn't. And uh, Michael Fisher's review, Mr. Mobile himself, um, verified what I had thought. So let me get to into this thing for a while. I ended up picking this thing up because, well, I'm going to take this out of the folio. The device itself is really, really thin. Uh, and the pen, I love that it magnetically attaches to the device. That's kind of been the experience with every single uh, pen that I have used, with the exception of the Surface Duo with the Surface Pen. It doesn't have a magnetic silo or, or attachment to it, so it's a little cumbersome. But overall, I'm so glad that they did it that way so I don't have to worry about it. So when you look at the device, it is a lot lighter than it looks, uh, but it is the chassis is strong enough for you to be confident in writing in it, especially when you're not on a sturdy surface, because, well, like paper, uh, if you're writing on it and you're not, you don't have anything kind of leveraging the back, it's just going to you know, flop over. So I kind of had that concern about this because, like, well, this is really thin compared to my tablets. I don't know if I can just write on it and could be concerned about folding it. But I can tell you that uh, I had all the confidence in the world, very little learning curve to this. Uh, and yeah, and I've been using it since. Now, with the exception of the bezel, this metal bezel that runs along the length of the left side of the device, it looks like a piece of paper for the most part. Uh, and it almost would seem that way uh, if, you know, if it was just this. I would have liked it preferably, but now it looks like it has like this weird extension over. But when you're using it with the folio, which is what I do, I use it all the time with the folio, then like, you know what? Uh, this can stay uh, just because, you know, that's kind of where the hinge is. So I look at this as kind of like the binding of the book when it's with the folio. Uh, and this is the paper that you're actually working with. And then, of course, the area that actually is the e-ink side of this. Now, there's only one button to this whole thing, and that's the power button all the way at the top. So right now, my device is in sleep mode. So, well, technically, it's paused, but there is a sleep mode to, to this where it'll tell you, hey, this thing is asleep. But now that I'm powering it on officially to use it, um, now I can access my files. I am working on my third book as of this uh, this recording. Uh, so these are my books here on the shelf. The three books published, two in a series of uh, romantic comedies, uh, and a third book of that romantic comedy series has been in the works for some time. Uh, and the fastest way for me to proceed in being able to cover that book has been the use of this. So in opening a chapter up, this is what it looks like. And I'll have some B-roll here to show you in a moment because there is an interface that pops up on the left side that you can actually turn off. So to have a less 
inter like interference but when you want to control like the the width of your marker uh, annotations uh if you made a mistake and you want to go back and you want to use the eraser part in case you don't have this pen because you're making notes in a, in a different way because there's like another one uh, besides just this one um this one has an eraser this has no battery by the way so this is supposed to just be you know uh in perpetuity indefinitely which i really appreciate by the way because when you're working on this and you're scribbling along it's like oh look i made all these notes then you could erase it so this is the selection tool so let me switch over to the marker side so this is the marker and if i were to scribble on it then i could just flip it around and just like anything else erase as if it were a pencil see like literally so I think that's pretty cool. Now there is a quicker way to actually erase the whole thing, uh, especially if you have a lot of notes that you want to just get rid of. You can hit the undo button, and then there is a redo button too. In case you're like, oh snap, I didn't mean to. So it does work in that way, and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, there is an actual eraser function right underneath the width of your marker, um, like uh, annotations. So that's pretty cool. But again, if you want to have an uninterrupted experience, you can make it go away. Uh, and just keep going along. There is an onboard uh, keyboard that I've never had to use because almost everything that I do is basically just pushing things over here and I use it like paper. So I forget that there is a keyboard here. So I haven't typed with it because I haven't needed to, but I can let you know that it is there. Now, let me get into the cloud services side of things because this is something that I didn't feel that I needed, uh, but I appreciated that there was enough of the free side for me to use it until. It told me that it's not syncing on some chapters. Like, hmm, not syncing. I mean, not that it inter interrupted what I was doing because those were older parts of my manuscript that I've already moved on from, and what I needed to uh, to access with, I did. It was synchronizing at the time. So this, at this point, means really nothing to me. It said if any file is over fifty days old, uh, you would need to upgrade or get a subscription to their cloud service. And that's how you uh, end up making sure that all your work here and on mobile apps like your, for iOS and Android and the web interface, um, not the web interface, but the computer applications would have them there with all your annotations. Otherwise, you can open this and I'll tell you, look, you're not going to be syncing this. Do you still want to make changes to it? Just letting you know because it won't synchronize unless you get uh, the subscription. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. So be it. So to me, uh, I haven't needed this per se. I wanted to do it locally. So for that, there is a web interface where you can do it that way. But you can drag and drop into the browser, and there you are. Now, let me talk about the folio real quick, because this is a premium folio that comes with a perforated side here on, on the, well, near the spine. And when I would use this, because it turns all the way around, I would be concerned it's like well won't that ruin the folio though because you know it'll be bending to one side a lot would i have trouble closing well it does have a magnetic um close to it which prevents it from falling out and it's kept the shape and i appreciate that because it's, this thing spends more time open than it does closed and i have enjoyed the peace of mind that this brings that i don't have to baby this thing so this is a pricey device, okay? But I'm gonna tell you right now why this thing has made it so much easier for me with respects to working on my book. So when it comes to the first book that I wrote, which would be this one here, Finding Love But Not Really, which I recommend you get it, all these are available in paperback and uh, Kindle at Amazon. Uh, this one, I wrote it in uh, what is called a white heat. So. In the heat of the moment, I wrote that book in three weeks, but it took me about six months to edit. There's this psychological thing that when you have something typed on a screen versus printed, uh, you, for some reason, you can pick up your typos on the printed paper versus the screen that you just finished reading. Again, so when I wrote the second book, the second book, I, I wrote it in six months because it's a harder book to write, but I edited it in three weeks. My approach was I ordered um, author's copies from Amazon for me to basically correct. And that's the same thing with this behemoth of a book, which is over 500 pages long, The Andre Segovia Show, Transfers of the Early Days, where I ended up printing the book and then just writing all my notes on it. But at the same time, I'm like, this is a waste of paper. You know, it's, it's sometimes necessary, but uh, how can I 
make this a lot more efficient where if I need to pick up my, my book to continue my editing, that, that it's not stuck in, uh, in my studio or my office or I left it at home. And that's where something like this came into play. It's like, you know what? I'll try this out because I, I was editing on the iPad and I was editing on my Samsung. I, I did not like that I was missing very much the same things on either device because using Microsoft Word on a screen. So when I got this, it was for my manuscript because I already gone through it three different times on Microsoft Word. So when I put it on this one, and I started going through it. I'm like, how did I miss all these, all these things? That's why. Because the whole thing about having an e-ink display is very akin to a, a, a physical piece of paper that it has revitalized and sped up my ability to make edits. Now, of course, this doesn't convert over to Word, and that's fine. That's why I'm making hand notes. Uh, but I can tell you that this is my fourth read through through my manuscript of what's already been written. And I've already edited and revised every chapter but one. I'm going to be finishing in a time that I didn't think I was going to be able to do because I was on the way to finish writing the book to then review it again on an iPad or a, tab or a Samsung tablet to then have Amazon print the book to send to me to then go through the whole thing all over again. And this thing has basically cut out all those delays and, and supply chains that I had to wait on because I got to get the book over to me, which is going to take like a week or two. So I'm like, I am basically finalizing the manuscript using this device. This thing, as pricey as it is, has made itself definitely worthwhile for me. And while I don't use the subscription side of things to uh, synchronize everything, um, I, it is a convenient feature to have. I am not that kind of a writer yet in needing that much, but I can definitely see a need for it. The only thing is, depending on where you are and what uh, services you might use in this genre of e-ink tablets, there are certain devices that have that cloud seeking feature available for free, as I understand it. That's been kind of the knock on this device in that the concern is that this is a little pricey for what they're asking for. This is a very light package, a very attractive package. The minimalism, the design, um, the, the quality of the product. I haven't had any issues with it. The sturdiness of this marker slash pen that's fallen so many times on concrete and it looks like it doesn't have a ding on it. And the fact that there's no battery in it. It, it just everything just works out of the box you know what they say plug and play that's how i felt with this thing and i haven't looked back so to me it's definitely been worthwhile and if you're in that space it's definitely worth something to consider but if the sinking part might be the deal breaker for you then that's where i'll leave it open to your judgment but for me for my first experience with the e-ink tablet and it being the remarkable a two tablet, which I have been following since they started, by the way, I waited for this thing because I wanted to wait for the next iteration. I absolutely love this product and it gets my backing. And that's it for this review. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Follow me across the socials, especially on Instagram, where mostly I do giveaways and I'm giving away some books. So for those of you that are into writing and reading, I'm giving away physical books because pick up a book, people, <laughs> uh, including a little something of mine. So. Tune in, follow, like, share, and subscribe to the know here on this channel so you will stay in the know, and I'll see you on the next one.